What's cracking, big dogs? It is April 1st, which means the Rookie Dynasty Guide is officially live. BigDogsDraftGuide.com forward slash MKF. Go get that shits for $10. Today we're doing a mock draft uh, from scratch. Like we're in the kitchen cooking up, baby. All fresh ingredients. Startup. Dynasty startup mock draft. Super flex. Is this tight end premium? What are we doing? Zero tight end premium. We don't respect tight ends around here. So is it zero tight ends or is it? No, no tight end regular premium. settings yeah regular okay regular settings as Noah would likes to fucking confuse <laughs> me in the first two minutes of the goddamn video here's how we're going to do this though because super flex is obviously very prominent in today's day and age and quarterbacks make uh the majority of the first few rounds we're going to take different strategies in drafting our teams right now i have the 103 mike has the 111 and noah's in between us at the 108 we got a little noah oreo action going on right now we're going to take different strategies in terms of drafting quarterbacks. So I don't think we've chosen yet. Mike, which one do you have? You have – he's chosen. Late two. quarterback. Late quarterback. So his strategy is going to be late quarterback. Me and Noah are going to go between middle quarterbacks, middle round quarterbacks, and early. So, Noah, you have either CVS or White. Call it in the air. CVS. It's White. I promise. Bing, bang, boom. You never lie. Uh, <laughs> So I get my pick of how I want to attack the draft. I'm going to go with early quarterbacks. I think I'm in a good spot with the 103. So we'll go early. Noah, you get mid-round. I'll put my medicine away. Y'all can't see that. Are we ready to mock draft, fellas? Yes, Let's sir. get it. Hit the intro. <laughs> <laughs> I clapped in the beginning, so it's already lined up. You're good. All right, whatever. All right, so we are on the clock. The other eight members in this draft are from our Discord channel. Ooh, this is beautiful. They left me my pick of quarterbacks on the board. Uh, did we redo? We did, okay. Did you put this as two Dynasty. quarterbacks, or you, or you can't do that as Dynasty? Uh, I put it as Superflex. They know it's Superflex, though, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I'm up at the 103 right now. We're doing a Dynasty startup. And my mind goes to Patrick Mahomes. I probably am still thinking about this the wrong way because it's somewhere in my mind is still like, ah, oh, Lamar Jackson, I don't know if his style can hold up for the next, you know, three, five years. Will they figure his, his game out eventually? I mean, probably not. I might look like an asshole in a couple of years, but I don't think you can go wrong with Patrick Mahomes. So at the 103 early quarterback strategy, I'm going to roll with Patrick Mahomes and I'm going to turn my text messages off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't <laughs> knock that pick right there. Pretty standard through the first four. And if I'm looking down this entire video, it's because I'm doing it on my phone because my computer cannot handle more than one thing at once. So we have Mahomes off the board. We have Lamar Jackson, Michael Thomas. And, uh, again, this is super flex. This is half PPR, <laughs> dynasty startup. You guys worried at all about uh, Michael Thomas, like, in his unicorn season? You think that's repeatable? I mean, he's done it three times, basically. Um, no, I mean, no, I mean, this is a unicorn season. I'm talking about this season where, like, he basically had, like, monster receptions. Like, he was basically a running back in your wide receiver slot. Like, a pretty – Pretty unicorn season. That like, way. do I expect him to repeat these numbers? Probably not. But, I mean, if you're going to tell me that he's going to give you 110 catches for the next five years, like, you know, you'll just take that floor. A lot of the, a lot of the beginning of, of oh, yeah, for sure. dynasty drafts are making sure that you get, you know, your core five or six players that are going to lead your team for the next, you know, three years or so. You don't want to start getting fucking cute and uh, picking guys that are either injury prone or, um, or, or risky early on. At least that's the way I look at it. Yeah, and I'm going floor right here with Alvin Kamara. 81 catches in the first three years. He's, what, like 25 years old? I don't yep. – he's one of those guys that I'm not worried about getting a second contract because he's not just a running back. He's a real receiving threat out of the backfield. So, he can do more than these guys like Derrick Henry and Kenyon Drake. Well, Kenyon Drake is a pretty good pass catcher, but he's more an overall really good talent. So, I don't expect him to not get signed uh, after next season. That's big-time value, man. I would have taken Alvin Kamara over both Cook and Zeke, if I'm being honest. Yeah, I personally I... have Zeke ahead of him, but – I don't know. They're like all super good. You matter. guys aren't nervous about Kamara's long-term value at all in terms of Breeze retiring or in terms of his contract? No. I mean, we looked at uh, – if you looked at how he got used, like, last year, even when Breeze was out, like, he was he was still balling. Like, the only time he stopped balling was because he got the high ankle sprain, and we know that shit fucking slaps. So, um, in terms of his usage, in terms of, like, his sustainability, like, he's, he's like, he's one running back, which I've always been comfortable investing in in the first round just because I think – you know, his longevity is going to be there. My pick here, though, I'm going to go my boy, 
Joe Mixon. Risky pick, but uh, picking at the end of the first, he's going to be available for you a lot of the time. And I think if I pick from this late, I'm going to have a lot of Joe Mixon. I like that. Let, me, let me ask you about Joe Mixon because, I mean, I, I think at this point everyone likes the guy's talent. I, I like I, I'm, I'm still reserved on him only because, like, when are they going to give him the passing work? Like, it's been a few years, and, like, even last year we saw a down year in terms of pa- his passes, his targets went down even when they were a horrible offense. Like, are they ever yeah, going to get the reins? That was a bit weird because, uh, you know, what's-his-face uh, comes from the Rams o- offense, right? So, we actually expect him to get more passing game. But I say I'm going to try and give one more year because I'm going to see what Joe Burrow does with him because, I mean, we, we don't know if it's a function of Brady or Burrow, but we know Burrow was dumping off to running backs like no tomorrow. So, like you said, man, it's like the talent's there. They're getting their first round O line back. So I think this could be the year. Um, obviously, it's still a risky pick, though. But yeah, yeah. I mean, the offense is going to take a no offensive yes, you know. line. It's been a complete shit show there. They've had like Ryan Finley and Jeff Driscoll. So it's right. really a This next, next pick's going to be an easy one for me here. It's going to be our rookie 101, my rookie 101. Super flex, doesn't matter. Jonathan fucking Taylor, man. Put him up. This guy is a baller. So. Totally how about, all the, how about all the people out there saying it's too early for a rookie? Uh, I don't give a fuck what they say because, fuck I mean. Fuck them kids, right? Yeah, fuck them kids. yo. Because I, I guarantee you either Jonathan Taylor or Swift is going to be going in the end of the first. Come, come like, you know, August, May, maybe June, maybe. Come, uh, come August 2021 when the next time the NFL season happens. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Interesting. I got Josh Jacobs. So a lot of people – have Swift ranked above Jacobs. Obviously, Jacobs has, like, this solidified role. So, you know, some people like that comfort. But he's another one, kind of like you said with Joe Mixon, right? Like, when he's going to get that freaking passing volume, man? Just, like, every time I watch – I see Joe and Richard march out there and catch a pass and fall over, just fucking tilts me to no end. Yeah, but, they did, I mean, he's only been in the league for one year. This is Mixon's third year, and it's three years in, and he hasn't got the pass catching work, which scares me. Jacobs, on the other hand, like, one of the first reports we saw come out of – uh was maybe the senior bowl or the combine weekend or something was Mike Mayock talking about how the next step in Jacobs's progression is to keep feeding him the ball. So I'm someone that like, I don't really, I mean, uh, is to get him more involved in the passing game. Yeah. I'm someone that like, I'm not going to buy into him saying that one time, but starting this early. And if, you know, if we keep hearing things like that, where the beat reporters are like, Oh my God, he's catching so many passes in training camp, things like that. I will yeah. continually get higher on Jacobs. Cause you know, eventually like where there's smoke, there's fire. And there's usually things that come out um, report wise that, that make you start to believe in it a little bit Definitely. more. Jacobs could be that guy. Pretty interesting to see uh, the turn here. I can't see who it is cause the zoom is blocking it, but Dak Prescott and uh, who's that Kyler? Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're going back to back. What do you guys think about taking two QBs of the turn? I mean, uh, it puts you at a huge disadvantage, uh, the rest of your team. I'm not a fan of it. I would like to take one quarterback there, but I would probably, I probably wouldn't go with a uh, back to back. Yeah. Especially with like Devonte Adams and JT on the board, you can get a solidified skill position player with Kyler Murray there. I mean, maybe I get it because he's afraid that a run is about to happen and he's at the end of the next turn, but still like if you have Kyler Murray, you don't need as elite of a quarterback as Dak there. You can get like a Daniel Jones later and be fine with that. Yeah, yeah, totally agree. Well, I'm loving B classes draft Dalvin Cook and DeAndre Swift back to back. That's yeah, not bad. Two ro- two rookies, two rookies in the second round, guys. All right, yeah. so I am uh, Patrick Mahomes is my first pick, and I'm going with the early quarterback strategy, which kind of forces me into a hole here. But uh, that doesn't mean I have to take one right now. I do feel as if Russell Wilson is kind of in a tier of his own. And if I don't take Russ, there's almost a guarantee that one of these two guys here will take Russ. So I have to keep that in mind when, when I'm looking at wide receivers. I would, be, I would be extremely happy at my third round pick with either Godwin, Amari Cooper, DJ Moore, even like Juju there. So I have a little bit more leverage at wide receiver. So since I will be using two of my first three picks on quarterbacks, I might as well grab Russ now because I think he's a tier ahead of the rest of the guys on the board. Great pick. Love that. He's definitely the end of that tier. And, and in my eyes, like, there's six quarterbacks that are every week starters and everyone else is a streamer. Yeah, so Josh Allen goes right after. That would have been Russell Wilson if I didn't take him. So that's my thought process. You always have yeah. to look on the – especially in super flex leagues because you have to be super conscious of when the quarterback runs start. Yeah. So there goes another running back, and I'll probably have my choice of wide receiver almost. Ooh, Chris Godwin snatched right this before you. Yeah. Godwin's off the board. the board. What do you guys think of them? Like Leonard Fournette, Sanders, Melvin Gordon. Like those aren't guys that I really trust too much to have as an RB1. No, I'm, I'm going to end up – what I'm going to end up doing here is probably going some sort of zero running back strategy. 
uh, because I just see too much value in guys like Junior, you know what I, Cooper, DJ Moore. I'll, I'll tell you what I would do after you pick your pick. Okay. I know what you're going to say, Mike, and I'm about to do it if he falls to me. You'd probably go with Kittle here, huh? That was my idea. Doesn't look like that was, that was Mike's idea by his reaction. That was this not is, my idea. This is not a tight end premium, right? No, it's no. Not. Okay. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Amari here. I don't know why, but I'm just like really, really bullish on Amari. I love the fact that now we have longevity Oof. between Dak and Amari, and they're gonna go, um, and they're gonna be together for the next like four or five years, probably. So. Wow. Yeah, I was two rookie, about, uh, I was two like, rookie QBs go uh, in the third round there. He's got three quarterbacks. Sexy Pats is loving yeah. the quarterback landscape. That, yeah. That's what I was going to say, man. I was going to say uh, I would have taken um, Carson Wentz right there where you took Amari Cooper. Like, I, I agree that taking two quarterbacks I, – I usually don't go early quarterback, but if I do, I'm just, like, going ham on quarterbacks. Like, I'll, I'll go, like, four or five rounds with a bunch of quarterbacks because, like, you just have to, like, create – you have to create, like, some sort of demand in the market. Otherwise, you're just, like, not going to have enough trading assets. So that's no, kind of what I do. right. Because if I went – I went with two of their – like, the, two of his value is only going to go upwards. If I go with two of their and by, like, week two he's balling out, I could flip to a four, a round two, or a round one pick. Yeah. So it's I probably mean, you, a good idea. I'm just actually very, very, very bullish on a guy like Amari Cooper. Um, no, so I agree. I figured, you know, I'll get a staple for my team and um, kind of not play too risky. Fuck floors. I also want to talk about um, our, our – because our rankings are in our draft guide, and I know – you had brought up, Mike, um, the dichotomy between Taylor and DeAndre Swift. So right now, overall Dynasty startup rankings, we as a consensus have Taylor at 14, which would be the 202 exactly where you took him. And then DeAndre Swift is right behind him at 15. Mm -hmm. um, so it's interesting there. And I think the third rookie running back we have coming off the board is Cam Akers all the way down at 29. So a little bit of a drop off, but obviously those things are going to change drastically over uh, the next month when we have the draft hopefully still going on so um, if you guys want the full rankings dynasty rookie all that shit again big dog draft guy com slash mkf it is available right now and we'll be updating it throughout the entire offseason and summer let's get that bread all right there goes there goes george and there goes that run of wide receivers i was talking about before too yeah i went kittle there because the running backs like as i said earlier leonard ford at miles sanders gordon i'm not huge fans of them uh cam Akers, for as much as i love him in the third round it's a little bit too rich for my blood and as for the receivers I could have got there, like Odell, Kenny Galladay, Sutton, A.J. Brown, there's just so many, whereas Kittle gives you such a like a big positional advantage because I view him as by far and away the best tight end in the league and for fantasy purposes. Not even close, yeah. I totally agree. Third round for Kittle is about where I would take him, and late third round is even more comfortable. Like I think I think people undervalue – people overvalue tight ends in tight end premium, and they undervalue tight ends in non-tight end premium. That's how I think about it because, like, if you have a plug-and-play George Kittle, like I have him in a couple leagues, and even though they're not tight end premium, like it's a luxury that you – that can't be understated, right? Because you don't have to hold like three or four shitty tight ends that you cycle through. You have like roster space. It's just like the total, like just the ease of mind is like worth it alone for me. I'm going to go right ahead and take uh, Miles Sanders here. I don't even like Miles Sanders that much, but um, just given the general like valuation and community hype around him, uh, he's someone that I'm willing to take and flip potentially. Yeah, I, I could totally see that. He's going to probably end up in that running back by committee, but back, like Kittle – I think it's such a good pick in Dynasty because the guys that are going to go right next to him, like the Kelsey, he has like 10, not 10 years, but he probably has like seven years on Kelsey. So the fact that they're going like four picks apart, but you're about to get an extra seven years out of his career is like, can't be understated or overstated. However the fuck you use that. <laughs> right, I like that turn though. Kelsey, it probably a little rich for me right now. I don't know if I want to grab him in a Dynasty startup, but AJ Brown in the fourth round is mwah. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I got a, got a little bit of a decision here. Um, That's what we call being on the clock, sir. Yeah, I was, I was, I was gonna go AJ Brown to spice things up, but uh, you know, just given where things fell, I think the disrespect has gone on long enough. OBJ. <laughs> Yep. Or Odell, fourth round value. I mean, that's this is someone that was going as the one point oh one. All right, two so years ago. Let's 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 talk about how the board has played out so far. We have. Uh, really running back and quarterback heavy first two rounds, only four wide receivers when there was about 10 or 12 running backs off the board. And then the third round, only one running back, five wide receivers, three quarterbacks. Um, I'd imagine that's how a lot of drafts are going to end up going this year. I could, I could see guys like Eckler, Aaron Jones, Derrick Henry swapping spots with the DJ Moores, the Amari Coopers, and the Chris Godwins in a lot of startups. 
Um, mm-hmm. What have you guys noticed so far in like mock drafts that you've done? Um, so I still see a lot of wide receivers going early because people, you know, tend to subscribe to that, you know, wide receiver longevity play. Mm-hmm. For me, though, um, at least, you know, for me and other guys that, that think like me as well, I think we just like, I just don't see any value in drafting wide receivers in the first three rounds because if you look at the depth of the position, you're getting fringe wide receiver one production and guys like Ro- Robert Woods in like the seventh, eighth round, you're getting like a Rob in like the sixth round. Like it's just not worth it to go wide receiver that early. Yeah, and it feels like really? it's so much easier to hit on a breakout receiver in rounds like nine and ten than like a running back at that point. Just like aim for a second or third year guy. Like a Michael Gallup last year, in one of my startups, I'm pretty sure it was like a thirteenth or fourteenth round pick. Like Cortland Sutton yeah. was like a ninth or tenth round it, pick. So it, it kind of comes down to like, would you rather have like a Devonte Adams plus like a Leonard Fournette, or would you rather have like a Jonathan Taylor plus like an A Rob? You know, that's kind of the trade offs you're trying to look to make if you're taking wide receiver early. Yeah, Yeah, it's a good point. You always have to look at those like player swaps in terms of what you're giving up and what you're going to get when you make certain picks. Yeah, I'm going mid QB. So I just took Baker Mayfield there. For me personally, I think that's kind of an end of a tier. Like I don't like Matt Ryan too much. Aaron Rodgers just carries name value at this point. Like he hasn't really been good for fantasy since 2016. And he's like, what, 36, 37 years old. So I'm not a huge fan of that. Uh and after like Stafford's always injured, Jared Goff, eh, like, I don't know. I like Daniel Jones a little bit, but I don't know. I don't think he's a good real life quarterback. And I'm not so sure that like, obviously he's going to play out his contract, but after that, like what are the chances that they want to bring him back? If he continues to fumble the ball, every other play. Daniel Jones is going way too early in startups for me now. Like if you add his interceptions plus fumbles, he's basically on Jameis Winston level and it's like no one else is close. Yeah. yeah. Right. Let me give you a wild stat on Aaron Rodgers, though. I was looking in this uh, when I was doing a quarterback study. Like you said, he's really trading on name value. Like he's, he's more, a uh, boom bust than Jared Goff, right? So if we look at 2019, Aaron Rodgers had four finishes in the top five and 50% of the time he was outside of top 20. So he's a low end QB two to high end QB three. Jared Goff was only outside the top 20, like 30% of the time. And he's going way later. So at this point in their careers, I would take Goff over Aaron Rodgers. I don't even like Jared Goff that much. Yeah, I agree with that. He got that big contract yeah. too. So he's gonna be around for a while. I'm fine with Jared Goff if he keeps falling down, bro. Like, I understand yeah. a lot of people don't like him, and there, there are things not to like. But, like, any quarterback that you're getting from the 15 to 20 range is going to have his flaws. And for someone that's already put up, you know, a 4,800-yard season and has, has shown that he could put up those kind of numbers and stats, like signed to a long-term deal with, like, tied to a good offensive coach, I mean, there are a lot worse options. Yeah. All right, I'm yeah. on the clock. Damn. Those are two picks I was looking at right there. Kenny G and Mark Andrews. So Ooh, yeah. Andrews was kind of the end of the tier for those elite tight ends that I think you can grab because he's also obviously so young. Um, mm-hmm. I'm not really about to trust Evan Ingram as my fourth round pick. And then after that, it gets a little dicey with the rest of them. Uh, I liked Kenny G there. I am, I'm probably going to be looking back at wide receivers again, only because I don't know, man, I, I just cannot get on board with Leonard Fournette. Like, Maybe in the yeah. fifth round, if I fade him here and he comes back to me, I'll think about it. But, like, even if you're going zero running back, you know, like, I just – I'd rather invest two rounds later into someone that can get maybe, like, 70% of the production this year. Um, so, that being said, I'll probably grab Allen Robinson here. Love that pick. Love yeah, that. Allen Robinson, and I think uh, with Foles coming in and likely taking the job from Trubisky, we'll see a lot more stability in the passing game overall, even if Foles is just the middle of the pack passer. Fucking Trubisky was bottom, bottom tier, bottom fucking every. Oh, I like that pick with CD Lamb. Ooh, yeah. that is early. Wow, that's uh, that's where I got him. That's dope. Yeah, I love that. But uh, yeah, it's the first time I've seen them go that early. I, I agree with you on Allen Robinson. I actually have Allen Robinson ahead of Julio Jones. I think um, I do too. Yeah, I think, I think, I think wide receiver ten. I was going through my rankings yeah. and I'm like, I'd rather have a Rob than this guy. And this there, guy. Weren't, there weren't a lot of guys. Yeah, I think he's a wide receiver one for me in dynasty for sure. Yep. Yep. Uh, I totally forgot about the rookie running backs. And I believe, <laughs> I believe Cam Akers is still on the board. So he's on the board. Yeah. So I'm probably going to grab Akers here. This this is what seems like the, the perfect uh, zero running back kind of guy for me right now. I'm in the fifth round. And if Akers can land in a spot where he's even like remotely a 1A to the 1B, he's going to return fantastic value, even his rookie year, if he's, if he's competing with someone because he has the upside to be an absolute workhorse down the line because he's got the size like 217 has elite speed for the size is there's not a lot of flaws to his game so uh acres is like the perfect zero running back target if you can get him this late in drafts 
Totally yeah. agree. I like your last two picks. Those are two guys that, like, you think back to last year. One was in college. One was actually in the NFL. And, like, their situations can't be worse than what they did last year. And both of them produced last year in spite of those situations. So if Cam Akers goes, like, anywhere but Miami, uh, it's going to be wheels up for him because he's such a good running back and can catch the ball. And what he did behind FSU's offensive line can't be understated despite a lot of people wanting to understate that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yards per carry, man. Yards yeah. per carry. <laughs> oh, I love that Terry pick too. Terry. Is that where you got him? You got Terry in the fifth, Nick? What's that? Is that where you have Terry, like in the fifth, fifth, sixth round? I don't even know. I think he's my wide receiver 17. Oh, wow. Nice. I feel like I have him super low. He's like in my low. Yeah. Team. I have him lower as well. Yeah, he's a he was just a wide receiver eighteen off the board right here. I have him seventeen. He's just he's just a guy that I, I don't know. Like I, I just really love the talent, and I'm just like I think he's another guy. Like he produced last year in a fucking miserable situation as a rookie. Like how can yep. you? He's like Robert Woods with four three speed. That's the way I look yep. at it. Yeah, it's just like so tough because when you actually look at the rankings, like if you were just to ask me where I had like McLaurin, I'd say probably wide receiver 20. But then you just look at how deep the position is and you're like, actually, he's like wide receiver 20 at 29. I know he's higher for you, but just like even the guys on the board, like Diggs, Ridley, Cooper Cup, Metcalf, yeah. like you would think that these guys are like wide receiver twos. But when you actually iron out your rankings, they're like wide receiver threes. Yeah, that's yeah. why I basically don't draft wide receivers for the first few rounds. Yeah, it makes sense looking at how fucking deep it is right now, to be honest. Yeah, there's like 30 wide receivers I'd be comfortable starting as like my wide receiver one, too. Quarterback got fairly thin. Running backs, I still hate most of them. Wide receivers, there's a ton. And I'm going mid-quarterback, so I think I'm just going to go Jared Goff here, even though I disparaged him. I mean, he has too many weapons to not be like a decent enough super flex every single week that's going to outproduce usually what most of the other options I have here at skill positions. As yeah. Nick was saying earlier, like the trade off, would you rather have Jared Goff and then I can get, I don't even know, like Tyler Boyd in the next round or Stefan Diggs here and then one of the ver- quarterback falls, like a Minshew who might lose his job? Bro, Minshew, who's Minshew going to lose his job to? Hopefully nobody because I just drafted him in the sixth round of one of my actual leagues. But I think that's a good pick. I like Minshew's going to fucking surprise everybody. Yeah, I love Minshew. Same, dude. I think he's like the the ultimate. Lead. I, somehow he's not going around where like Drew Locke and Jim and like Jimmy Gr. I, I, I would take him. I would take him over them in a heartbeat. Jimmy, if you look, what, at what do you guys think contract? of Stafford? What do you guys I think love Stafford? Stafford, dude. I'm about to click Stafford right now, even though I'm late QB because this is just disrespectful <laughs> at this fine. point. I think late QB, like five to seven, is yeah. what I consider late. Yeah, I, I'm gonna take dude, Stafford. I don't, I don't know it's Stafford. I, here's the thing with late QB: your team could fall apart really quickly. You know, uh, because if you don't have two solid quarterbacks, you're fucked. Stafford, like, when you look at the stats of the half a year, yes, he was really good, really productive, like an elite producer in a sense. But this is this, he's old. And this is the second year in a row he's finished his season with a, with a pretty major back injury. I'm like, yo, he's not getting any younger, and those back injuries are not getting any slighter. And for that reason, I, I'm, I'm probably out on him in dynasty startup drafts. I, I will go back into the well when redraft leagues come around but he makes me nervous in, in dynasty leagues because he's someone that could easily if he gets one more you know if he gets hurt one more time like say his back injury pops up week seven this year he, like his career is probably done and you probably just fucked your team for a long time you know yeah the other thing yeah. that makes me nervous about these like fringy quarterbacks that might lose their job is cam newton and Jameis winston are still out there searching for jobs and although they aren't like Jameis obviously isn't a real really good like real life quarterback and cam we don't know his status like those are two guys that can supplant a quarterback that we think has a starting job heading into 2020. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I could totally see that. Um, with my next pick here, got a lot of options, um, but I think I'm going to go ahead and go for a play where I, li- I like drafting players where I think their value, they accumulate value over time that I can flip them for later. So I'm going like to go ahead and pick. snag DK Metcalf right here. So you have Metcalf over the other young receivers like Gallup and DJ Chark. And Debo uh, I have him over Gallup and DJ Chark and Samuel for sure. Yeah. The one that I have him that's close is uh, closer is Christian Kirk, but just based on public perception of value, I know there's no need to draft Kirk this early. So, yeah. Makes sense. Man, C. Elliott just made my decision very easy. Uh, I was between Singletary and Chark, but I just love Chark. The fact that if Minshew does stay as the quarterback, he showed such good chemistry with him. And he was so good last year, despite having quarterback play that switched between Foles, Minshew, Foles. Uh, the entire offensive line was terrible. They bring in Jay Gruden. Yeah, man, I think uh, we're in for a big fucking jump up from the in the third year. I I love I, I love the pairing between Gruden and DJ Chark here. 
And I brought it yeah. up in one of my videos, you know, the, just the skill set between him and AJ Green. And we just saw how well he was able to use AJ Green in his, it wasn't like AJ Green was in the middle of his prime. It was his rookie year, his sophomore year, and his junior year in the NFL. He was able to develop and use him as an alpha. And there's not a lot of difference between the way Chark plays and the way Green plays. So, yeah, they're both super lanky, speedy uh, jump ball specialists. So mm-hmm. it's going to be interesting to see for sure. I, I was interested to see, like, Marlon Mack actually went a lot earlier than I would have taken him. What are, your, what are you guys' thoughts on Marlon Mack? Not a fan. Um, I actually feel like he's going to drop enough this year where I might get back on the train. Yeah. Uh, because it's it's – I'm hoping we get to get uh, – just give me a second to look through this. Who do we have off the board in terms of rookie wide receivers? C.D. Lamb, Jerry, Jerry Judy, Judy, and C.D. Lamb. That's a nice discount from C.D. Lamb to Jerry Judy of two rounds. Yep. Um, I'm so sure there's another I, name. I don't really like a lot of running backs on the board right now. So, again, I will probably fade the position. I'm looking at some of these young wide receivers. And, I, I mean, I already have, like, two vets that are in, in the middle of their prime and Cooper and Robinson. So, I might take I'd – look, I'd start looking at a guy like Debo Samuel if you like him. I'm not, like, necessarily crazy high on him. Um, but I might look at someone in that age range just to kind of supplement those guys as they get a little bit older. I might look at a quarterback too, because I think again, the value is always there in, in super flex leagues. Cause there are going to be people like uh, whoever's in the one Oh eight spot right now. I'll go with Tannehill here. Whoever's in the one that pick is going to have to, you know, trade for a quarterback the, you know, we have busts every year. We have injuries every year and some guy needs a quarterback always. So having too many can never hurt. Nick, I'm never going to trade you for a quarterback. I'll just pick Tyrod. <laughs> <right. laughs> That's fun. <laughs> Sexy it'll Pats be, uh, be a got both the, both the smoothest route runners in the league. Uh, Kenny G with the smooth routes and then Jerry Judy, route running god. So, obviously obviously loves the routes. Sexy Pats, shout out to him. It's crazy that you should name those two, but the best wide receiver is right in the middle of them. <laughs> 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 Fucking asshole. <laughs> oh, fuck. Did someone took Darren Waller? God yeah. damn it. I and thought Melvin he'd make Gordon, it right to me. more upset about Melvin Gordon right there. <laughs> so Waller, Dude. Gordon would have been a target for me maybe on the comeback around like 810 or 903 as someone if I'm going to be fading running back I think you can get Ooh. high end running back two production for this year probably this year only um so I'm liking how the team's shaping up so far I'm gonna end up needing to go like really heavy on just a lot of dart throw running backs later on I'm fine with that Right now, I'm looking between, again, younger wide receivers. Uh, I personally like Hollywood Brown a lot. Like Christian Ooh. Kirk, Robert Woods is an, uh, another really consistent pairing that I could put with Cooper and Allen Robinson. But I think I'm actually going to go with the youth here at the tight end position in Evan Ingram. I think seven in, in seven Damn round, it. that's where you got to go. I mean, the kid is still, what is he, 24 years old? 25. 25 years old. Like, he's got another fucking seven years of injury-riddled seasons, but at least you'll get, like, eight games a season where he's really good for you. Yeah. yeah, seventh round is too good, man. Like, I mean, if, whenever he plays, he's, I, I kind of tweeted about this as a joke, but I hope it doesn't happen. He's kind of like Will Fuller, you know. If he's if he's playing, you just lace him up, put him in there, and he's going to be a stud. But, yeah. you know, he's kind of made of glass so far. So I'm really, really hoping that he can make a comeback and uh, not get that injury-prone label slapped on him. Also, but, like, one, one year of him staying healthy, like, say he plays 15 games this year, his yeah. trade value is going to be up there with the Mark Andrews's and the, and the George Kittles pretty much. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, that's why I put on Twitter about Carrion Johnson and even like Darius Geis. If those guys play a full 16 this year and they put up like 12, 1300 yards and eight touchdowns, like a decent RB2 season, their value, like Geis is still on the board in the seventh. If he does that next year and he's still 23, 24 years old, he's going to be like a fourth round pick. Yep. It's going to be a huge value. Oh, Karen, I was actually Karen thinking. Johnson will not be the next Dalvin Cook. I didn't mean it that way. So many people got so mad about that. They're like, I'm a Lions fan. It's not going to happen. <laughs> like, well, they're just never going to give him the keys to the backfield. That's the problem. Yeah, they have to do some changing in the front office there with, like, Matt Patricia, Matt Patricia or whatever. Like, that dude is a certified bum. It will. And once Matt Safford's back breaks in half, they'll have to, <laughs> they'll have to rebuild their organization. Dude, Matt Stafford gets hurt a lot, and I, for some reason in my mind, I thought he missed a lot of games, and I went back and checked, and he just, he's actually, like, just Iron Man. Like, he gets hurt, but he just keeps playing. We had the injury-prone label, like, after the first year or two, and then he yeah. played 16 games for, like, 10 <laughs> yeah. straight years. Yeah, just never missed a game. He would break his back, but he would play through it, and that's why he'd throw up, like, 112 passing yards a game to end the season always. And this is why you wait on wide receivers, guys. Robert Woods yeah. in the seventh round. That is ridiculous value. 
Le'Veon Bell would have been a nice zero running back target for me down yeah. here in the eighth or ninth. Yeah, at this point, I don't like any of the running backs really at in the seventh round. Wide receiver is still very deep, and I already have two pretty good guys right there. I think I'm going to go quarterback, and I'm picking all the quarterbacks that I basically shit on earlier in the video. I'm going to go Minshew here because I think he's Damn somebody it. that can gain more value heading into next year and be much more than a seventh-round pick and net me anything more than what's on the board. Dude, Minshew's going to be a fantasy. He's going to be great. dude. He's going to be I've, this year's Josh Allen, putting up 17 points a game as a floor, and he's going to progress as a player, and then next year we'll be all excited about him. Dude. Minshew was like was literally the easiest value creation of last year. I just picked him off on every waiver and then ended up flipping him a couple and keeping in some. And he, he runs any, a lot too. I'm looking at his game that's log. What I was gonna say any quarterback that has a good arm that actually runs the ball, fucking easy smash button, especially yeah. because of the in drafts. Yeah, Russell yeah. He had 56, 42, 48, 28, 34, 31, 27, 20, Jeez, 36. So like basically at least half a touchdown in most of his games worth of rushing sets. I didn't realize okay. he put up those numbers. Yeah, I mean, I just went for the in, big ones, but even then, he had like 300 rushing yards. In the seventh round here, not his biggest fan, but can't pass up my boy Zach Ertz. I mean, he's not as good as Kelsey, but from a fantasy perspective, they're pretty damn close in terms of his target volume. I know everyone thinks that uh, Goddard's taking over this year, but you know, I just don't see it happening. I mean, Goddard's not Ertz, taking over until Ertz is yeah. gone. The problem yeah. is like. Zach Ertz, I, I, at times last year, I felt like he was on his last legs, you know? I mean, I felt like he's on his last legs for the last three years because he just doesn't look good <laughs> running the ball, but they keep feeding him. Um, and, and apparently, like, someone sent me an article. I, I said that, you know, God is going to be great. And they're like, no, he's not. Like, we're going to extend Zach Ertz. And he sent me some article that said, like, Philly was actually in talks to extend him. So I don't know how much truth there is to that, but if he does get yeah. extended, like, he's well, They basically... were also, like, trying to trade him to Jacksonville last year. So, like, nobody can be trusted during yeah. quarantine. People yeah, are just exactly. out ignorant fucking reports and rumors. Let me ask you something. Uh, as opposed to taking like a Zach Ertz there, when you're on the corners, like say you're at the, you know, you're the 11th pick or whatever, and I'm the third pick, mm -hmm. you ever factor that in? Like say, um, say you would fade Zach Ertz there because mm -hmm. maybe you, you'll, you'll be happy pairing like a Higby and an OJ Howard, knowing that since you're on the end of the draft board, like you can, you could double up on two guys. Like you won't miss yep. any tiers. You know what I mean? Cause if you're in yeah, the middle, yeah. you might start the tight end run, but since you're on the end, like there's no way there's going to be a run in between one pick and two. So you could effectively, you know, fade Zach Ertz there and then pair an Irv Smith and a Jared Cook. So you could use Jared Cook this year, Irv Smith, you know, one more year after when Kyle Rudolph is finally gone. Yeah. That's, that's kind of like my, my normal strategy. Um, but I just think, like, in the seventh round, like, that much volume is just hard to pass up. Like, I could have gotten him, I guess, around the turn because I, I totally forgot that Hugo drafted Kelsey, so I probably would have done that. But, you know, I think at this, like, at this range, like, I'm fine with it. But, yeah, typically if I miss out on Kelsey, Kittle, uh, Andrews, I'm waiting until, like, double digits. So I'm pairing exactly, like you said, like, Higby plus, like, for two or three uh, lower round dart throws. That's how you get guys like Mark Andrews, basically. Let, let me ask you, if if you were told, for, it was a guaranteed fact that Zach Ertz this year would be the tight end four, tight end four overall, and then next year his numbers chop down by, to like 60%, like he was the tight end nine, right? His like decline is there. Would you still take Zach Ertz here? No, definitely no. not. So, you, so you're assuming that he's going to be very good again this year and then also really good again the year after that? I think he's going to be really good this year. And I think, like, he'll probably lose a step, but he'll still be, like, a top, top like, six producer. That's Someone that you way start every it. week. Yeah, yeah, that's the way I look too, at it. Like, he doesn't win with his athleticism either. So even if he does fall off a little bit, it's not like if he loses a step, he's going to be awful because he's just that safety blanket underneath for Carson Wentz that's going to be peppered with 120 targets a season. Yeah. yeah, my 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 only concern. I just have a lot of pushback on Ertz because, like, last year he was doing shit over the first half of the year, and then everybody in that receiving group got hurt or busted, and were just like terrible. And then we saw him kind of pick it up. So, like, realistically, that's the way I look at players. Like with Ertz, I'm like, yeah, he could put up a you know top three or four year this year. Do I expect him to do it again next year? And if I'm thinking that way, do I still want to draft him? That's the way I look at a lot of players too. So yeah. I'm definitely – you're definitely open to trading him after this year. But I will say, like, the reason why I'm a little bit more comfortable taking him is because they did not address the wide receiver position at all through free agency. And I understand they're going to yeah. draft someone. But, like, I imagine yeah. them drafting plus stacking with a free agent or trading, and they just didn't do it. So, Zach Ertz is still going to be the most reliable guy there as long as he's on the field. Yeah. Yeah, Makes my eighth-round pick, I went Devontae Parker. He's somebody who last yeah. year he probably didn't have to draft anywhere near like the top 15 rounds. But I like Chan Gailey going there. I looked at 
what he did, his tendencies with wide receivers, and he just feeds them so heavily in the red zone. We think back to, I think it was 2015 or 2016 with the Jets with Brandon Marshall and Eric Decker. Both those guys were like double-digit touchdown scoring players. And you look at their red zone numbers, they're both seeing like 20 red zone targets a season. Ah, uh, snipes. Yeah, and obviously the quarterback play is up in the air as of now, but he did it with Ryan Fitzpatrick in a few games with Josh Rosen. So I'm not Ooh, love that Clyde edwards lair pick. I was, was debating good. between him and Gurley. Yeah, I was going to take him here. All right, so at the 8-10 here, this is probably where I would snag Mike's boy Christian Kirk. Everyone else Ooh. behind him is just fucking geriatric at this point. And, <laughs> um. It's like, and I'm not going to need instant pro- I don't need a guy like T.Y. Hilton because I already have a Cooper and an Allen Robinson. So I'm not looking for that like one year rental. I'd rather invest into a guy like Kirk, who, you know, his ceiling is obviously impacted heavily with DeAndre Hopkins there. Like, there's a zero percent chance Kirk can be the alpha there now, at least for the next like two or three years. Doesn't mean he can't put up, you know, 75 for a thousand and and seven touchdowns, which as your wide receiver three is is fantastic production. So I'll go with Kirk there. Yeah, and he hasn't produced too much in his first two years. But if we look at Larry Fitzgerald's stats, too, like he was the clear alpha. He saw over 100 targets these past three years. And obviously, Hopkins is probably going to see like 40 to 50 more than what he saw. But I think that offense in their second year with Kyler Murray heading into his second year as well, I think they're going to have more volume to feed more mouths in that offense. And I think Christian Kirk is the clear number two in the pass catching game. Yeah, it's basically like if you think he's good, like this offense has – there's no way that they downgrade. Like this offense is only going to be kicked into higher gear and everyone's going to benefit from that. But the younger best players on the team, the best playmakers are the ones that are really going to benefit. And I just like, if you think Kirk's a good player, then his numbers should just boost exponentially just by default. You know? Yep. Yeah. Ooh, Justin Jefferson. Like that pick. That's pretty wide receiver or rookie receiver heavy with Justin Jefferson and CD lamb. Yeah. And they're all starting I mean, for him because he only has three receivers. Yeah, yeah, but he does have Barkley Henry. It's not a bad, not a bad go. Not a bad. It's not a bad team, man. He'll get a lot of production this year from his running backs, and then Joe Burrow, Matt Ryan's a nice little QB tandem. Yeah. All right, I'm back up what on you, the board. What's up? What do you guys? I was gonna say you can make your pick, but what do you guys think about like Noah Fant? I feel like I'm just not gonna have too many shares of him because he's going like so early. I feel like if he didn't have that 175 yard catch and run, like no one would be <laughs> excited about him. He's like a young yeah. Vance McDonald. He's just jacked and like he has one good <laughs> game every year. Yeah, I mean, I like him, but it's just it's just like too early to take a tight end in the eighth when you can get guys like Tyler Higby way later and pair them with like, you know, a Gerald Everett or another John o. Smith or something like that. I think you get like very similar returns. Yeah. Right. I know he's a rookie, but guess how many games he had over 50 receiving yards last year? Yeah. Fuck. I really want to mm. – This is tough. Well, you guys... Nah, You're about to time out, though. <laughs> no, I'm paying attention. Oh, that was, that was a good one. I was going to say, like, you should just take a shot on Darius Geis. Yeah, so again, I'm taking the shot on yeah. Geis there. I was looking at the other running backs, and I, w- I was deciding between Geis and Kareem Hunt. And uh, I don't think you can really go wrong either way. I think Geis is a better running back altogether. And uh, it's tough, like, hitting the trigger on, Dice, on Geis because there's almost no way that they let him be the workhorse this year because they've just signed – they're just like they're showing you their cards, man. They're signing way too many running backs this year, like already. And uh, it just feels like they're going to be a team that hands him the ball on early downs, but they get J.D. McKissick involved and they have like breather backs coming in and out. So I was debating between him and Kareem Hunt, who will be on Cleveland. He was, I mean, he was good. Like you could have used him as a, as a flex play last year with Cleveland. So he has another year in this offense and uh, – or another, I guess. Yeah, that's going to that's be incredible. And plus he was like James White with rushing down volume which is, like, very valuable for fantasy. Yeah, yep. so that was a debate, the internal debate for me. There was a wide receiver I did like, but I ended up passing because I need a little bit more help on the running back. And Geis has, like, the way I look at it, Geis and Han, I guess, both of them have long-term upside. You know, if yep. I'm trying to hit on, like, uh, like uh, youth running backs that actually can be around and, and be a player on my team for a long time, I think, I think Geis and Cam Akers, obviously, are two guys that – might not be amazing this year, but have the range of outcomes where they're both workhorses next year. Yeah. Also, Geis is going to get – is someone, like, again, you want to buy assets that you think can increase in value, both in the near and long term. Like, if Geis goes out there and has one of those 100-yard games like he did last year, you're going to be able to flip him immediately. Yeah, that's true. I, I am in a very tough excited. spot here. I have one running back, and who's left is James Conner, uh, Chris Carson, Philip Lindsay, Mark Ingram, David Johnson. So a bunch of guys that I am not – fans of 
But at this point, like, I don't you know. My like team David right Johnson. You should stack David Johnson and Sony Michelle here back to back. <laughs> yeah, to bite. Need need. yeah I, I would love that pairing. Uh, I think I'm actually going to go Chris Carson here. I, I don't love that pick, but almost in the 10th round, my team is yeah. going to win now. And if he does end up being healthy for the start of the season, which is up in the air, like he's basically been a running back one every time he's on the field. And in the 10th round, like, I don't know, you can't get much better value than that. I know he's not going to gain too much value going forward. I mean, the team could easily take a running back round one or round two as they've shown they like to do before. But uh, I think instead of going for what I think can gain value next year, I think I just need something to win now with the roster I built. I'm terrified of Carson right now because each report that comes out is like pushing his timeline further back. It's like, we, we, we think he'll be ready for training. camp. We think he'll be ready for the start of the season. Once you hear that, like, once you hear the start of the season thing, that's for me, that's like bail. That's like, Fucking get off, get off, get off. So yeah. Carson, I'm I'm nervous that like he's not going to be you know back to 80 percent until like August or some shit. And at that point, uh, he's not going to have a lot of leverage to own the backfield. So I'm I'm a little nervous about Carson. I was scared I was going to get the snipe get snipe there, but thankfully my boy fell. I'm gonna go ahead and cop this match right now on Jalen Hurts. All right, risque. I like it. Uh, so he's like kind of he's kind of a young guy that kind of I can pair behind Matthew Stafford. Um, I'm a big fan of Jalen Hurts. If he gets draft capital anywhere close to Justin Herbert, like late first, even I call that close. I'm taking Jalen Hurts over Justin Herbert all day long. So let me ask you. I'm sure you're about to double down on another quarterback or at this in this round, if not the next one. Like when you're in a position that you are, where you faded quarterback for so long, you'd rather have the long-term upside of a guy like that than have production year one? Yeah, because... because, Obviously, you could could grab, like, the, you know, Big Ben or Rivers or, you know... Yeah, exactly. Insert veteran quarterback that will give you 4,200 passing yards, whatever, 24 touchdowns or some shit that you have using your quarterback. But, like, for me, it's kind of risky. No, it's definitely risky. I mean, late round quarterback is is all about the risk. And the, 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 the thing is, like, normally the draft wouldn't have gone like this, right? Like, I would have traded up and got Drew Brees uh, after I saw that players are gone. But like, given you can't trade, I couldn't have done that. Or I would have traded back, traded up and got, like, Brady, like one of these one of these other vets. I would have snagged Kirk Cousins probably um, as well before DK Metcalf if I was, like, really that worried. But I think I'm just trying to show what you can do. And the thing is, like, you can always grab veteran quarterbacks off the scrap heap for cheap. So that's kind of like my thought process. I'm going to go ahead and pair with TJ Hawkinson right here in the 10th round. People forgot about him. He's still an incredible tight end prospect. People just don't know that like rookie tight ends don't produce, right? And he got hurt. So I'm, I'm definitely all, all in on the buying TJ Hawkinson train. Yeah, for sure. Like two rounds later than Fant as well. Like Fant did yeah. right as a rookie, but Hawkinson wasn't bad before he went down. He had that huge week one and then he kind of got phased out of that offense. But like that team had so many weapons. And, I mean, he's a rookie. What do you really expect out of the guy? Right here, I'm about to shock the world, I think. And I'm going to get somebody who isn't even on a team. I'm going to go with Cam Newton. Just oh, I was thinking about that. Yeah, I love back that. On somebody that can gain value next year. Like, if he does walk into a starting job or at least fight for it, and he starts a few games here and there, like, he's going to return so much more value than, like, whoever's left on the board. Uh, a James Conner, a Philip Lindsay, who's a backup. David Johnson, who's basically one foot in the grave, like, I know I like Cam Newton there, despite him not having a landing spot. Love that pick. I was debating between Hawkinson and Cam. Yeah, I don't know what to do with Cam right now. I've been, I, I've received some offers for him just to trade for rookie picks. Fuck! There goes Deontay Johnson. God damn it! I actually debated. <laughs> I was going to take Deontay Johnson where I took Darius Geis. That's how much I fucking like him. I love. I love. Him. Yeah, it's a good pick. Fuck. Yeah, I was going to go with Deontay Johnson there. Um, yeah, with Cam, I just, I just, I don't know. Like no. That I have no, I have no words for Cam because we have absolutely no fucking Dude, idea. And that's how good he is. And the f- <laughs> the fact that we're never like he's not going to get um, a physical done anytime soon, like that, that makes me a little bit nervous. Like who knows? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I just still think that Cam Newton at like seventy five percent is still better than like <laughs> most of the league. Teddy Bridgewater, yeah, but uh, but an NFL team has to fucking agree with you though. That's the yeah. Problem. Yeah. I mean, someone's going to get desperate, man. Like, you're going to see another, like, Mason Rudolph situation out there, and then someone's like, fuck this. Like, I'm signing Cam Newton. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I am on the clock. Wow, these, these, like, veteran running backs are falling quick. Some some good options on there, I think, at this this price. 
Yeah, not bad. I have I've no desire in Connor. I actually like Lindsay a little bit more than most people probably do. Interesting. I, uh, I'm going to go with Mike Williams, though. I think Mike Williams had a, had a pretty baller year last year. We don't know what's going to be the, the quarterback situation there. But uh, I don't know. He, he is someone who swung me last year. I was not a fan of him whatsoever. I was telling people not to draft him going into the year. But, like, the more you watch him play, you know, his upside is not that of a, an elite wide receiver one at all. But like, he could be – just like Christian Kirk, he, be, he could be a very steady wide receiver two on a, on a real football team that goes, you know, five for 70 week in, week out, and the year with eight to ten touchdowns. And that you'll take any, any day in the tenth round. He's still yeah. – you know, he's young, so – there's also the chance that uh, the Chargers make a move, and there's been a lot of chatter about them going up for Tua. If Tua lands in the Chargers, that's, that's big ups for Mike Williams, Keenan Allen, everybody there. Yep. The other thing about Mike Williams is, like, through these past two years, like, he had one season with no yards and 10 touchdowns, and then this year he had over 1,000 yards and, like, two touchdowns. Just, like, give him half those touchdowns back to this past year, and he's, like, a low-end wide receiver too. And in the 10th round, getting a 25-year-old receiver with the upside that Nick was saying, like, you can't get much better than that. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Okay. So I'm back on the board running back. Uh, yeah, this might be, eh, it's probably not that much of a reach considering guys that are still on the board, but I'm going to go with justice Hill here. I am a huge fan of just justice Hill still as a, running back and as a prospect. If you think about like what he needs in order to be fantasy relevant, it's the only person above him really is Mark Ingram and Mark Ingram got hurt at the end of the year last year. He's on, uh, he's definitely on the older side. He's one injury away from, from he's one Mark Ingram injury away from being like, if, if he's, if he's on the waiver wire in a league, like he's easily the number one pickup right there. If Mark Ingram gets hurt, if he is like, okay, so say Mark Ingram goes down next year in like week three from weeks four to 16 or 17, where does justice Hill finish in fantasy? Running back 40 because Gus Edwards is a top 10 runner. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. <laughs> Stop that. Dude, know, seriously, think- why, why can't he beat out Gus Edwards? That's that's my question. That's a good question. Gus Edwards is just a fucking workhorse, bro. I do like Gus Edwards a lot. <laughs> I, I like respect the fucking fact that he just keeps staying with the Ravens. And every time he gets on the field, every time he gets on the field, he's like good. He might yeah. be like better than Mark Ingram, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, he's been, he's been pretty efficient. I think, I don't know, I think that offense just likes to have a big back complimenting Lamar Jackson. We've seen it with Mark Ingram, and when Mark Ingram went down, it was Gus Edwards' backfield. He's quietly had 700 rushing yards in back-to-back seasons, despite being the clear-cut number two. Uh, it could be more of a split with him and Justice Hill, but I don't see any reason that, like... Oh, Antonio Gibson, the God, that hurts. Motherfucker. The God. Oh, my God, this I'm motherfucker, I'm about to dude. choose the guy who... Antonio Gibson is going to take the job of. I'll go with Ronald Jones in the late eleventh round as my running back three. I'm not as soon as as soon as Bruce Arians just came out and said, "I love that Bruce Arians is just so flat out like telling you what's going to happen." As soon as he's like <laughs> adding a pass catching back to the mix, I was like, "I don't want first and second down Ronald Jones. Get him just to, like early down thumper Ronald Jones. Get him the fuck off my team." <laughs> yeah, it, it's kind of tough. He just took Gibson right in front of me, but. Not much left on the board. Rashad Penny is up there with a fucking ACL hanging out of his knee. So Why don't you take Gus Edwards there? You know, Nick, <laughs> it might be my 12-5. <laughs> it's going to fucking have to be. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take... Oh, you got sniped of Titty Higgins? That's gotta be yeah. Tough. Yeah, fuck you guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead here and take a quarterback and risk it here with uh, Nick Foles. I think there's a good chance that Nick Foles becomes like an okay starter um, because we all know Trubisky sucks shit. So Yeah, at, at this point, I'm looking at Foles as the quarterback. Like, I'm not even really thinking about Trubisky yeah. as the quarterback there. Yeah, totally agree. Mike, did you not see Tyrod Taylor on the board? I saw Tyrod Taylor, but we know they're taking the quarterback for sure. So yeah, he's not the long term answer. There. I don't know <laughs> he's what like, you fucking want him. To uh, I got sniped on Goddard. Ah, uh, damn. Yeah, I was thinking about Goddard here at the last pick. All right, so Goddard, Goddard, Goddard and your boy Taylor. So we all we obviously only have twelve rounds on the board here, um, because if we did a full dynasty startup, it would be fucking twenty eight rounds, and you guys would be sitting here forever and we wanted to just get the the gist across of doing different strategies and how the teams worked out so obviously we're going to need y'all to vote down below how the teams worked out um, between myself and the 103 Noah at the 108 Mike at the 111 whose team do you like the most we'll also be linking uh 
the URL to the draft board. So you can look at the full draft board afterwards. It's just a link that takes you to sleeper. We'll also link down below the link to our discord server, which is basically just a giant chat. If you want to get into mock drafts and stuff, you want to mock draft with us, that is how you will do so. And we'll link the draft guide, which is live today. And we'll link a bunch of other shit. I don't know. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and reach here similar to what Nick did just to make a point, but I'm going to go ahead and draft Tony Pollard. I absolutely love this guy. And I think he's going to be become like a, a bit of a hybrid, you know, what, what we think what Gibson is. Gibson is a way more athletic version of Pollard, um, but we've kind of seen Pollard do some, do some beautiful stuff already. So I'm excited about that offense and maybe him getting some slot snaps with uh, Randall Cobb out of there now. Yeah, it's basically the Austin Eckler situation all over again. And obviously uh, Ezekiel Elliott is a better running back than Melvin Gordon, but like the chance that he goes down or his efficiency dips this year as he's like 25 years old and like 15 million touches into his career, like Tony Pollard yep. could be huge next year. One guy in the 12th round that I'm just going to take right now, and there's trade talks about him moving from the Rams, is Brandon Cooks. This guy Ooh, has yeah. had, like, four 1,000-yard seasons. And if he lands in a Philly through, like, a trade, if they give up a third-round pick for him, I mean, it's wheels up for him. He's that deep th threat that they need. And he's been so good. Like, if you just take out what he did last year and look at the rest of his career, he's just a high-end wide receiver two, low-end wide receiver one, and he's 26 years old. When's the, yeah, dude, when's the last time you saw a drop-off, like, fucking – we had with Brandon Cooks, bro. Oh, man. Like, that shit was a roller coaster. Like, straight up, top to <laughs> bottom. Like, he was so high on top of the world. Like, third, fourth round startup pick. And then falling all the way down to the 12th round. It's a sad, sad sight. David Johnson would like a word. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> you guys want to – should we take a couple minutes to just kind of say, like, what we would do to round out our rosters? We're not going to draft anymore beyond this. But just, like, take a look at the board, you know. You know, yeah, we all yeah. have needs. We'd probably go through, uh, you know, me, you, and, and Noah's team and just kind of give people a shout-out, see, like, you know, what they could go for. Yeah, I'll go with uh, Lindsay here. I just – yo, Lindsay is, like, two years in the NFL, undrafted free agent, back-to-back 1,000-yard -back seasons. Like, the, he's so the guy good. Just, he's just a player. Like, he knows how to get it done regardless of if Melvin Gordon – you see the key came out. There was, like, a quote today that was, like, I'm not going to hand someone my job. I'm, like, for that reason, I almost feel like Lindsay's going to fucking beat out Melvin Gordon. <laughs> Lindsay – there's no way that Melvin Gordon looks better in a real-time practice than Philip Lindsay does running the ball right now. At this point in their career, there's no fucking way. No, because yeah, Melvin I mean, Gordon's always got wraps around his leg during practice. Yeah, fucking Lindsay's how, the anti-rap. How, how sad would that be if uh, Melvin Gordon would be like the saddest tale of all time? He like holds out, gets loses his job to an undrafted free agent, Nelson Eckler, goes to Denver, and it gets beat out by another undrafted free agent. Nothing would crazy. surprise – it would not surprise me at all if Lindsay – like halfway through the season, we're seeing Lindsay get 12 to 15 carries, Gordon get 8 to 10 carries, plus the, cat, the passing work. I think Lindsay's yeah. going to end up getting more carries than Gordon this year. I could, I could see that play out for sure. He's just going to be way more efficient than Gordon is. All right, so we have uh, wrapped up the 12 rounds as Mike – Included to um, we can talk a little bit more about maybe what we would do to end the draft based on the teams that we've put together so far Mike you want to kick it off yeah sure so I obviously went super running back heavy right I opened with Nixon Taylor Sanders um, and then dip back in the well again for Gurley later um, so I only have two wide receivers and we're a three start three wide receiver league OBJ obviously my wide receiver one but the reason why I wait on wide receiver is because you can get some of these following guys in these late rounds for absolute dirt cheap. All right. So you got golden Tate who put up a bunch of like wide receiver one seasons last year, seemed to have a decent chemistry. Uh, you got Darius Slayton again, a guy who's got pretty high ceiling. And then my personal favorite Marvin Jones jr. Who I would love to pair up with uh, Stafford. I think he's just a super underrated wide receiver. Um, and you know, some of these late guys are definitely enough to kind of fill out your roster for that wide receiver three slots. So that's kind of how I go about it. If you faded, what's funny about Dynasty, bro, is like if you faded wide receiver completely, even through the sixth round, like you didn't take DK Metcalf, your yeah. starting lineup next year could potentially be, if you went, you know, wide receivers for the next four rounds, you could have Adam Thielen, you could have Devontae Parker, you could have uh, one of these like later round guys that has some upside. You could legit have both of those guys, Thielen and Parker, in the position that they're in right now could be top 12. Like you could yeah. potentially have two wide receiver ones in your lineup at seventh, eighth round, ninth round prices, plus some some young guys like Titty Boy, T. Higgins, and Denzel. <laughs> Never. Uh, with my team, how I built it, my running back two is kind of an anomaly. I have Chris Carson, <laughs> uh, Ronald Jones, and a bunch of bums. <laughs> but I do have four quarterbacks, and three of them currently have jobs. So the way I look at it is if Cam Newton does get signed somewhere or if Gardner Minshew just keeps his job and he looks good early in the season, 
I could probably flip, you know, a Cam Newton or a Min- – like, if Cam Newton gets his job before the season starts, I could probably flip uh, a Cam Newton plus a Chris Carson for, like, a Devin Singletary and another pick for, like, 2021 or something like that. Here's the thing. Like, I, I think with Cam Newton, I've been thinking about it. So, what are the chances Cam Newton is a starting quarterback in the NFL 2020? Like, what do you put the odds at? I'd say, like, 65%. Mike? Oh, really? Yeah. I'd say, like, 75, 80 that's what I'm saying. If if it happens, like if we know going into the year he's going to be a starting quarterback, like if you if you're a, someone in the audience, you believe that with you know with all your heart that he's going to be a starting quarterback next year, he's not a tenth round pick in startups. He's, he's yeah. way higher than that. So if you look at it that way, you're like, yeah, you know, we're getting him because he's falling to tenth round. But if you're really really sure that he's going to be a starting quarterback, he's probably like a seventh round pick, if not even higher than that, because. It's fucking Cam Newton. So, yeah, I like the fact that you grabbed him there at 10th round because as soon as he signs with the team, his value just shot up five rounds. Yeah, and on top of that, like, I have Jared Goff as well. If Cam Newton signs, then I have Minshew, Newton, and Baker. Then I can trade off a Jared Goff who has a lot higher perceived value than the rest of those guys and get a bigger return than what I would have gotten if I just traded Cam Newton and Chris Carson. So that's how I designed my team. Uh, Most of these guys are, like, in their primes right now, so it's kind of a win-now squad. I don't have too much youth other than, like, DJ Chark, but – uh, sometimes when value falls just because assets are a little bit older, I'm fine taking them. Big old fucking facts. All right. So my squad, obviously we're a little, we'll, we're a little hurting at the running back position, but since I went with two quarterbacks off the rip, I have a pretty fucking deadly combo in Patrick Mahomes and Russell Wilson, which will anchor my team for about 50 points per week. Uh, and then I love Cooper, Allen Robinson, Christian Kirk, Mike Williams. I'm, I'm a really big fan of that, the pairing of wide receivers there. I think you have a really good mix of, like, ceiling and floor. Even if Cooper does give you some boom games, some bust games, again, he's going to be with Dak for the next four or five years. Um, and I love what the passing game is probably going to bring under Mike McCarthy and Kellen Moore as the OC. Uh, with Allen Robinson, Christian Kirk, those are guys I think that could probably swap off, like, top 15 weeks, week in and week out. Cam Akers was the upside play, of course. We don't know where he's going to land, but if he lands in a good situation, like, I could have my RB1 there in the fifth round so it, it's tough if you end up fading running backs early the the tough thing as, as Noah brought up before is like you don't have where we're at right now once you get to about the you know ninth round there are still some upside plays like Geis and Hunt but after that there's really no upside like you everyone knows everyone and you're just darting at you know third third string running backs or like rookies that we have no idea if they're even going to make the the fucking roster at this point given that we're not in the draft yet so it is a little bit tough when you do fade running back but I think the way that our draft went, because it was so running back early, a lot of wide receiver value fell to me, and uh, it put me in a tricky spot. But if I could do it over, I might swap out an early running back um, for – like maybe I, I might have paired up Dobbins and Akers in the four and five spot to feel a little bit better about the upside. But uh, overall, I, I like the team. I would probably have to shoot on a, a couple more running backs and maybe grab one of those veteran quarterbacks and see if I can move one of them after the, after the draft. Yeah, and if say if you just swap out what David Montgomery did as a rookie into Cam Akers' spot, which I think is around his floor if he does get a starting job, having David Montgomery with a team that has Patrick Mahomes, Evan Ingram, Russell Wilson, Allen Robinson, Amari Cooper, like that's fine. I mean, like objectively as a running back, one you don't want that, but with the surrounding players and the surrounding cast that Nick has on his team, that's more than enough you need to like win weeks, week in or week out. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm I'm okay with the team kind of fading running back early on, so. That is a wrap-up. Again, this will be posted in the description as well as probably pinned on the comment section to the full board. If you all want to draft with us next time, hit up the Discord. Join it. They got mock drafts going that we're not even involved in half the time. There are channels for fucking NFL draft, prospects, other fantasy, trade advice, all that kind of shit. So we got a huge community of the big dogs in Discord. Link down below. Big Dogs Draft Guide is live right now. If you have it, let us know what you think. It's got every prospect profile. It's got our rankings. It's going to have new exclusive articles posted in there weekly. We're going to have exclusive mock drafts just like this that go into the draft guide weekly that are not on the YouTube. So if you all enjoyed, hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. We're covering everything Dynasty every week on Bunk Bed Breakdowns. I realized that was the first time we said it, I think, uh, the entire show. So this this is Bunk Bed Breakdowns. I lost uh, my bunk bed, so. (laughs) Yeah, so that's why we faded it for so long. That's it for this week. I'm out. We're out. Stay quarantined, baby. Peace out, big dogs.